You're watching Mobile World Live, and this is the first in a series of industry discussions with our partner and global interconnect leader, Cineverse. Now, today we're going to be reviewing the impact of operators around the world closing down their 2G and 3G networks, essentially shutting their legacy RAN and core networks. We're going to be looking at how, how all of this is affecting roamers. Well, with me to discuss this topic, I've got two experts. I've got Bob Chiodo from Cineverse and also delighted to welcome the head of GSMA Intelligence, Peter Yarek. Gentlemen, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me, Justin. Great to be here, everyone. Peter, let's start by putting this issue into context, if we can. Now, of course, last year, the big three U.S. operators all sunsetted their 3G networks. Um, why did they do this? And also, is this just confined to the U.S. at the moment? So, great great question. I mean, the rationale behind sunsetting networks, 2G and 3G, pretty simple, right? You've got 2G, 3G networks. Why would you want to shut that down? Because you want to launch next generation networks, whether that's 4G or 5G, and we can understand why, right? faster speeds, better experience, more efficient use of your spectrum. I think we understand the value of, of 4G and 5G, but to do that, you need to do a few things. One, you need to free up some spectrum, spectrum you might've been using for 2G or 3G, but you also need to find the money, right? And if you think about it, running 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G all at the same time, that's pretty expensive. So you need to shut down some of those older networks to free up, to free up basically operational cash to, to spend money to actually run those those next gen networks. Now, obviously, when those networks shut down in the U.S., um, big news. But it's definitely a global phenomenon, right? So, I mean, if we look at the ten year period from 2015 to 2025, we see 177 networks around the world, 2G and 3G networks being shut down. If you just look at 23 to 25, it's over 100, right? So you see that pace picking up definitely over the last few networks, which makes sense as we see more 4G and 5G launches. That's great context, Peter, and obviously uh, a trend that's only going to continue. So let's bring Bob in to the conversation. Bob, where does Cineverse play a role in this? Where do you fit in? Yeah, well, if, you know, Cineverse has a legacy. Uh, our history is solving interconnect problems, like what we're seeing here with this latest exciting chapter of moving into 5G from older, older technologies. So... You know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, for the last four years, we've been partnering and co-creating with different operators across the globe on preparing for this, for this transition, uh, you know, from legacy, legacy networks into 5G. Can you give us an idea of how much traffic you're having to handle um, to ensure that uh, the operators have a solution for this issue? Sure. Yeah. The, uh, the, the solution that, that I alluded to where we partner with operators we refer to that as our Evolve Mobility portfolio. And, you know, we're 12, 15 months into, into this being in production. We have seven to eight million unique roamers per month, five to six million minutes of usage across the platform. Uh, we support nearly 20,000 devices and over 100 operators globally have been onboarded onto the platform. So, you know, the, the, this trend is alive and it's well, and uh, the platform has uh, plenty of upside here as we continue to expand globally. Yeah, and can you maybe dive a little bit deeper into some of the use cases that operators are enjoying at the moment, Bob? Yeah, sure. You can, you know, you think of the use cases in terms of sunsetting and greenfield. So, you know, uh, we, we have focused on the U.S. first, and you've got large, you know, GSM-based networks that are being transitioned, being transitioned out, and there was a subscriber experience as well as an inbound roaming revenue, uh, you know, uh, retention and protection uh, type of use case. And then you have other providers. You think about more greenfield uh, revenue uh, opportunities, where perhaps uh, we have one scenario where legacy CDMN net network uh, shutting down and viewing this. Uh, platform as an opportunity for a new revenue, a new revenue stream, uh, and then throughout the globe, you know, you, you you've got 4G and 5G focused operators that want to attract the 3G inbound roaming experience and round out their portfolio. So somewhere in here, whether it's sunsetting networks and and the uh, the, the the financial implications of being able to fund new networks and or greenfield and being able to round out a portfolio and attract, uh, attract new revenue streams while ensuring a great client experience, the use cases apply definitely outside of just the U.S. 
Yeah, you've but you both hinted there, or, or actually stated that this is very much beyond uh, a US issue. Bob, um, tell us a little bit more about some of the work that you've done outside of the US. Is this both European and Asian? Sure, absolutely, definitely more than uh, more than the US. It is global. So uh, you know, any, anywhere where there's moving out of legacy and into IP centric uh, models. Uh, you are going to have this conversation. So that is a global conversation. Uh, Evolve Mobility is one part of that. Volte testing, IPX networks. I mean, all of these foundational elements come into the conversation. Uh, Volte bilaterals do not happen overnight. So there have to be these piece parts across the globe that have to be a part of this, of this conversation. And in fact, uh, over 50% of the operators that uh, that we've onboarded onto our, our platform already have Volte in their home region. So we 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 know that it's more than just uh, those providers that uh, that lack a particular technology within their within their core network. And uh, and again, it is it's a global conversation. Uh, Canada and uh, and and Latin America here in uh, on this side of the globe, as well as in Europe and Asia Pac, the conversations are prevalent. And Bob, we tend to naturally focus on inbound roaming, but of course, once a network sunsets 3G radio, I think there's the issue of aren't they going to face or, or rip, get rid of the 3G core as well? And, and with that is, is full IMS. Um, so what impact does this have on outbound roamers? Are they going to face issues too? That is a great question. And uh, recently we have invested and launched what we refer to as our outbound evolved mobility to solve for uh, for that particular use case where you may have 4G and 5G roamers uh, moving into a, a network that has not enabled uh, Volte. So we've invested in the opportunity or we've invested in the technology that also secures that client experience as well. So it is, uh, it's an accelerant to allow for those operators to transition out of one technology and fund a new technology while, you know, really at the core, it's, it's maintaining an excellent client experience, subscriber experience that you would expect. Trying to get a sense of, you know, the global Volte readiness at the moment, gents. Um, Peter, how difficult is it to get this footprint of Volte roaming? It, and it's really, it's great to hear everything that Bob's talking about, because I think you hit it right. It, it really is about that footprint. And I think, so there's good news and bad news when we think about sort of Volte, Volte readiness. If you look at the progress that's been made, right, and let's look at a five-year time frame, let's say at the end of 2021 to where we see the world in 2025, you know, increase in Volte launches by operators, incredible, right? 50% increase, that's impressive, right? 20 really 25% increase over the last two years, or at least 24 and 25 when we're looking forward. So there's a lot more growth there, right? But if we're looking at the footprint, I think this is just interesting to think about where we are today. When we look at the global footprint for, for, for Volte, what you see is that in the majority of markets, there isn't Volte, right? It's about 55% of the markets out there that don't have Volte. And you know that says two things. One, we need solutions to help operators get that going, right? We need to make it easier for them because that really is important. But two, we, we need solutions to at least support the roaming for market for you know outbound as we heard, but anyone who is, is you know, when they're out there and then they find themselves in a market without it, well, they actually still have voice services. Uh, and so I think that, that when we look at readiness, those two things really, really hit us, you know, front and center. So Bob, still, still plenty of work to be done in this area. Plenty. There's a lot of work here, you know, and, and I guess another way to uh, to, to view that on, on top of, of what Peter just outlined uh, is just the talent. So you've got operators that need to obtain and retain and, and train talent that uh, that may be considered, you know, a niche in terms of, you know, Volte. And so, you know, when, when, when you add kind of the, the talent element to it, uh, there's the nuances of the testing, there's the understanding and application of of standards that are going to continue to evolve from an interconnect perspective, and just the sheer amount of work that it takes. Uh, you're talking about, you know, you know, hundreds of operators across the globe. So, you know, uh, and Cineverse has the expertise. So, from a, you know, from a talent perspective, it really does make a lot of sense, you know, to tap someone on the shoulder like Cineverse, where we've invested in employees that have the experience and, uh, you know, in again in the standards and and what's happening within this space in order to help you accelerate 
you know, moving into or taking advantage of some of the use cases that we that we talked about earlier in this uh, in this spot. Gents, it's been great to kick off our series of programs looking at network sunsetting trends. Thank you for your time. Look forward to more conversations. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Bob.